morning and welcome to worship. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday before Christmas. So I'll be recording a special Christmas Eve service for you as well that'll play on your TV on Christmas Eve. We are sad that we won't be together on Christmas Eve, but we will still be praying together. Here's a story that Mark Buchanan recorded in his book, Your Church is Too Safe. He says he was listening to a radio program um, and they were interviewing Dr. Kathleen Wormke, the director of the Center for Pre-Speech Development at the University of Würzburg in Germany. She was so excited because they had a new discovery. She published results from her research project comparing the cries of newborns in Germany versus those of newborns in France. And the research involved extensive and precise recordings of first cries in maternity wards. And she graphed the pitch and the cadence of the cries and compared them baby for baby along ethnic lines. And she discovered that babies cry with an accent. In France, babies consistently inflect from a low pitch to a high pitch. Wah, wah. In Germany, it's the opposite way. Wah, wah. Oh, trying, right? Um, she says that the baby has been listening in on the mother all through its development and its inflection reflects hers. Isn't that interesting? A baby eavesdrops on its mother for all those months and hears her way she speaks and hears that song. And he writes, it got me wondering, what song do we overhear from heaven that we try to sing on earth? We may poorly imitate it, squalling and squawking, but we sing it instinctually. It's in our bones. What is the music of heaven? It is love. Love is the music of heaven. And when we love, no matter how awkwardly we hum the anthem sung all day, every day by our Father in heaven. So today we are going to celebrate the Advent week concerning love and we're going to light the love advent candle our reading is from luke 1 47 to 55. this is mary's song that she sang my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant surely from now on all generations will call me blessed the, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, but sent away the rich empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Today, we light the candle of love in remembrance of God's merciful love shown to the world in the coming of Christ. Our first hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Let us pray. Most high God, for you, nothing is impossible. Through a poor young woman in a small town, you gave birth to your realm of endless glory. By your Holy Spirit, fill us with new life and hope and overshower, show, overshadow us with your power and grace so that we, like Mary, might be your servants, bearing witness to these promises in your word. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading comes to us from Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will, to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. So today we may be feeling forgotten, alone. We may wonder if God is watching out for our world, wondering if God notices us. And into our story today, let's invite Mary's song of praise. We read Mary's song, nicknamed the Magnific Magnificat, uh, as our call to worship today. It's the song that Mary broke out in when she went to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said, Blessed is the one who believed what the Lord told her would come to pass. And in Mary's song, she prophesies that God is watching our world. God has plans for our world and God's eyes and love are directed toward the humble ones the forgotten ones, the ones that others overlooked, God is their champion. So let's look at her, her song today. First, it says that God has remembered his mercy and his promises. So this is actually at the end of the song, Luke 1, 54. It says, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants, forever. So she's saying this event of Christ coming, the, the babe that was to be born to Mary, was a fulfillment of the promise of God from way before, back in the time of Abraham. Now, when we think about remembering, uh, it's dangerous to think this, right? Like, how good are we at remembering? I'm good at remembering some things, faces and names, but I'm not so good at remembering dates. I definitely have to keep a list. So I have an appreciation for those who remember dates very well. Remember. Even the power of saying the word remember, doesn't it make some things pop into your head that you were like, oh yeah, I needed to remember that. So in this song, God has remembered to be merciful to his people. Sometimes, we wait a long time and we wonder if God is ever going to come through. But Mary says in this song, God sending Jesus Christ is God remembering his promises. From way back at the beginning of the Bible, back in Genesis chapter 12, God promised Abraham that in his child, all children of the world, all, all people of the world would be blessed or in his descendant. So Jesus can trace his 
his ancestry all the way back to Abraham. And here we are, or at the time of Christ, it was 3,000 years since Abraham. And Mary says he remembered his promise to Abraham. So for you, for me, even though we've been waiting for a long time for the pandemic to be over, maybe for some of our prayers for ourselves and others to be answered, God remembers. God has not forgotten us. He thinks about us. He loves us. Secondly, it tells us that God is looking for the humble. Verse 48, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. He has looked with favor, or that word, he's noticed. He's gazed upon the lowliness of his servant. So he's saying that he looks at people who are even in the back of the line. Have you ever been moved to the front of the line for something? Uh, in school, my last name used to start with an S, so I was always in the back of the line. Every once in a while, a teacher would say, we're going to go reverse alphabetical order. Then I would get to be in the front of the line. Um, and, you know, there's always people who try to cut the line, like at amusement parks. Do you know in Disney World, you know, now have to have a certified doctor's letter saying that you are disabled because unscrupulous people try to cut into the front of the line and pretend to have a disability. So people at the front of the line, people at the end of the line. Who are the people at the end of the line in life? So who is God interested in? God's interested in people, even those who might have been overlooked. But people who seek him, those are the ones God is interested in. People who put their hope in God. So there's probably been times in life where you've been at the back of the line. When you've been poor and in need, lonely, tired, addicted, uncomfortable. And you wonder, because I'm not in the front, does God not see me? And this choice of Mary and this part in her song that he uh, turns his gaze upon us, realize you are noticed. That God coming to be born in this way, God is doing something extraordinary. He picked a regular girl from a family at the end of the line to show us that God values people who seek him. That was probably Mary's strength that she sought God. Not how much power or money we have, not how spiritual we are, not how many Christians we have in our family, not how much the world admires us. He comes to show his power in the most unlikely of places, to show his love to those who are hurting and to those who are put down. God is all about what we might call the upside down kingdom, where those who matter are those who are listening. Not those with the power or wealth or ability to get things done. Who matters to God? All the young, the restricted, the locked away, the addicted, the weak, the lonely. If any of these things describe you, God has noticed you and remembered you. God is not content for you to write yourself off or be unnoticed. You matter to God's kingdom. That's why he led a regular girl from a regular family who has quietly followed God to be a prophet to God's people in this song and to bear the Christ. Mary makes the observation that God has noticed. He's been mindful of the humble state of his servant. He's attentive. He's looked on with care. He's concerned himself with her. So that's the kind of God he is, looking with attentiveness in our low places. So in this song, we are invited to join Mary in the fear of God, to be a recipient of mercy, and to be of humble estate. So it talks about that he has noticed the humble estate of his servant. And Mary sings about how God scatters those who are proud in the thoughts of, his heart, of their hearts. God is looking for the humble. Not only humble of means, but humble of heart. Those who realize their inner poverty, that we're not all sufficient for the work of this life, that we need God's power and wisdom in our lives. Do you remember how Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit? What does that mean? It may mean recognizing 
our own inability to save ourselves, to do spiritual work, to pull ourselves up. You can't get your own self right with God. We need God to do it. We can't grow in grace and love by ourselves. We can't learn to forgive without God's help. Poverty of spirit is a person that realizes, I'm poor, I don't have it. I don't have it in me to be the person that I want to be, that God desires me to be. But someone who says, God, you need to do this in me. You need to do something in me so I come to you, God for a change of heart, for the power to do the things that you're calling me to do. God is the author of my salvation and my hope. It says he scatters those who are proud in their inmost thoughts and lifts up the humble. You know, it's not just rich people who can be self-sufficient, but there are some folks who feel like they've got it all together in their own little world. I've got my world insulated. No one can touch me. And this invites those who may think they've got it all together to develop this humility, a dependence on God, a habit of life, to be quick to realize where we are wrong or in need and need help, where self-reliance is not our aim, but reliance on God, accepting the help of others. Whew, we all find that hard, don't we? But it invites us to this. God's mercy is on those who fear him. Now, fear of God, it means that we think about what God thinks is most important, more than what the powerful people of this world think. We count God's opinion as more important. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. The, the King David has this prayer in Psalm 139. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. That's a humble prayer. Remember, Jesus, when he taught, he took up this theme of the last being first and the first being last, that God remembers his promises. And to get in on God's promises, we join God's cause. We join our hope to his. So for Mary, we know the rest of her story, right? God has now noticed her. And we think, oh, well, then she should get to be in the front of the line. Her life doesn't end up the way she thought. But look, she says, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. She doesn't become rich in things, but she's given purpose. And she, um, she helps, she raises Jesus. And when he's an adult, she's one of his supporters and believes in him and walks with him to the cross and is there at the resurrection. Mary's life is not an easy one, but she is blessed. She gets to play her part in God's big plan by doing what she's called to do, not as a rich or powerful woman, but as a person of faith, doing what God called her to do. So in a similar way, God calls us. You are noticed by God, and your today matters. God sees you, God loves you, and he invests this day with meaning as you join in God's work in this world. How can we help God fill the hungry with good things? Might be as simple as giving your pear to your next door neighbor when you, if you're not going to eat it, or helping those hungry for kindness or connection by making a phone call or praying for them. Humility. Humility and inner peace, they go hand in hand. The less compelled we are to prove ourselves to others, the easier it is to feel peaceful inside. So our call this week, know that God has noticed you. Accept the mercy and grace of God anew. And notice others, maybe those who are weak or unnoticed on God's behalf. He has not left us. God is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
Lord, we are watching and waiting for the coming of Christ, for the promise of a new creation. Lord, our hope is in you. We hear your word to us today, that you see us, you hear us, you love us, and you are near to us. And that just because the powers of this world have not taken notice, you have noticed those who are lonely and downtrodden and in need of justice. So Lord, we thank you that you've noticed us and everyone in need. Lord, let your reign of love shape us like a master potter skillfully forms a vessel so that we might reveal your beauty to the world. Let things be to us as you have decreed. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for healing and hope. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. Draw near, Lord, to all those who are waiting for you. Break into their circumstances with blessing. Heal the earth that awaits your restoration. Lord, we pray for this community where we live, for those who are lonely, that you would help us to be your hands and feet and that you would reach out by your spirit as well. Lord, we pray for those who work here, for those who live here, for our family and our friends. Lord, we pray that you might help us to use the gifts that you have granted us for the common good. We pray for all our loved ones, comfort all who suffer and despair, heal the sick, help those with all sorts of problems with your grace and your help. Lord, we put our burdens in your hands and we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. May God Almighty fill you with the joy of the Holy Spirit. May he strengthen you to serve him faithfully through Jesus Christ, who is coming to reign, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.